Welcome uh, one and all to our conference call for all the leads. Uh, today is the 5th of October and uh, this conference call is in fact number 145. We've been doing this for quite a while. We're in, well into our third year of these and we're always happy to hear anything that you have to say. We have a lot of great people already on the call and look forward to taking your questions and hearing about all the things that are going on in your lives. Again, if you have anything you'd like to talk with us about, press star six and one, and we'll take your questions uh, in the order in which we receive them before we get started. Uh, Tom, have you got anything exciting you'd like to uh, offer? <laughs> Nothing specific, uh, just always that we're here to help, and uh, if you need anything, you can always just reach out to us through support at alltheleads.com, and we track those items and assign them to the appropriate people to get back to you as quickly as possible. Okay, great. That's about it. All right. Uh, the only thing I would add before we start taking your questions is that, as we said last week uh, on the call, in response to your requests, we have added a section to your uh, uh, subscriber portal that allows you to see more than just the letters that we provide from Mailbox Motivator. In addition to that, we added a section for flyers and postcards and all of uh, that sort of stuff. So uh, that's there to meet your needs, and we're going to be adding to that substantially over the next several months, and uh, we'll go from that. Um, and uh, hang on one second. And, uh, yeah, Tom also mentioned to me that uh, I should remind you that Jim and Chad are not here. This is Tim Yandel. I'm your host. I'm the CEO of All the Leads, and Tom has joined us. Char Tom is the vice president of support for the company. And Jim and Chad, if you didn't uh, hear this earlier, are off riding bicycles in uh, the wilds of Appalachia right now. They're riding through the, uh, the top of the hills up there on a 40-plus mile a uh, two-day bike ride and uh, enjoying themselves. Tom and I are actually going to be heading up there to join them uh, tomorrow, and uh, we'll all be up in West Virginia on Friday, uh, and we're going to be meeting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week in a summit of the partners of the company to uh, see what we can do to continue to grow our business and, more importantly, what new services and value we can bring to your lives as our subscribers. Uh, this would be a good time for you to tell us if there's something you think we ought to be doing that we need to consider during that period. It'd be a great time for you to let us know that. So uh, do that on here, and uh, we'll go from there. And I believe Chad sent out a survey. If you haven't responded to that, I'd appreciate it if you would do that. It should be in your email. We always ask you every time we go to a summit, we kind of take your pulse via survey. And if you haven't taken the time to fill that out yet, it'd be a great time to do that and, and let us know. I'll share one other quick uh, story with you, and uh, you possibly get a kick out of this. So as you know, we, uh, we do all of our print business. We actually do the printing in-house, and we've established a pretty fair-sized facility to do that. And one of the things that we added to that was a uh, hydraulic cutting machine. And unbeknownst to the folks that ordered it, uh, which would be me among them, uh, it's a pretty fair-sized uh, machine. I knew it was pretty heavy, but I never really thought to think about how big it is. So uh, it actually arrived yesterday. And much to our chagrin, uh, the door of our building to put it in was not sufficient to get it through the door. So we had to uh, bring in a technician to literally disassemble the unit and bring it inside and install it. So uh, it's always fun to start something new where you're learning, but uh, we're doing it to meet your needs, and we're happy to do that. So uh, I just thought you might get a kick out of hearing about that. I know that Tom laughed at me when I told him that, so I'm sure you're probably laughing as well. <laughs> hey, we got a lot of people yes, on the call and three people already in the queue. And, Tom, if you'll go ahead and let me know uh, what's sitting there, I'll be happy to uh, start talking. All right. We have a caller ending in 3923. You're up. Hello? Can you hear yes. me? Yes, I hear you. Great. Hey there, how are you? Who I'm are we great. talking to? This is Jack in Houston, Texas. Hey there, Jack. What can we help you with today? Uh, I'm just trying to listen and pick up some information, man, how I, see how I can get my probate business off the ground. Okay. Well, that's what we're here for. Have you uh, Have you gotten your leads yet? Yes. Okay. And 
Have you uh, have you started sending out your letters? Have you set it up for us to send them out for you? Are you I've, tell I've me where sent, you're at at this point? Okay, I've sent out uh, my first uh, mailing. I sent it out a couple of weeks ago, and I'm you know just waiting on <laughs> to see what happens. And I've been okay. told that it usually takes three to five mailings before something happens. So I'm getting ready to. I sent a letter the first time, and I'm getting ready to send out a postcard this time. Okay. Well, let me, let me have you made have you made phone calls to follow up yet? No, I have not. Uh, the well, reason so I haven't made phone calls is because it's kind of difficult to get uh, phone numbers. Um, we furnish the phone numbers to you with your leads. Is that right? Uh huh. Yeah, okay. we've already every every. Yeah. If you go in and and work with your leads, the phone numbers are there. We give you as many as four phone numbers for each personal representative, and that's part of the data that we provide. We we kind of specialize in doing that. And the phone numbers are fairly accurate. Well, uh, four uh, of them. Yeah, the phone numbers are are extremely accurate and all that sort of stuff. Now, are, okay. you're, are you are you processing the leads that we sent you? You're a subscriber? I just recently subscribed. I was going okay. to the courthouse on my own, and I started subscribing to your service. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah, when you get the leads from us, you'll see that the leads – have you actually received leads from us already, or are you Not still yet. waiting on the first delivery? I'm in the delivery? process. Ah, okay, great. Well, you'll see that when the leads come in from us, they – the phone numbers are are part of the lead package that you receive, and our the recommended structure is to get the um, get the leads in, and then um, follow up with a phone call or send out a letter, follow up with a phone call. And you should, if you're mailing them yourself, uh, you know, give it about three days. And actually, the right way to do it is as you mail them, uh, mail a copy to yourself. That way, you'll know when your customer, your prospective customers are getting them as well. We always do that from Mailbox Motivator. When we do the mailing for you, we make sure that we put that out there. So you should do the same thing and then follow it up with a phone call each time. Okay, I will do that. And uh, Jack, I mean, when, when you do sign up or, you know, you said that you're in the process or already have, um, I will be doing an orientation with you going over all the accounts and tools and things, including what the data looks like and the phone numbers and all that. So, uh, if that hasn't been scheduled, it will be done. Okay, sounds good. But, yeah, we look forward to doing that, and uh, we'll certainly, as soon as your leads are out, we'll expect to hear back from you, and you can kind of tell us what your successes have been, and uh, we'll look forward to helping with you uh, come up with good good answers to your people when you talk with them. Are there any other things you'd like to talk with us about? No, that's that's about it. It's just kind of a wait-and-see game. Okay, well, we'll look forward to you getting getting your, your good leads from us, and uh, we'll uh, see where you stand maybe the next couple of weeks. Okay, sounds good. All right, well, listen, thanks for joining the call. It's a great place to do it, and if you haven't taken the opportunity to do so, go back and listen to some of the previous calls. You can either listen to them uh, on Facebook, or certainly we provide all of them now for you in your subscriber portal online and you can listen to them there so certainly go back and uh, you know kind of go to school on the previous calls we talk about all kinds of things here and uh, that'd be a great place for you to learn more okay okay will do all right again folks if you'd like to talk with us press star six and one and we'll be happy to answer your questions tom let's take the next one all right the next one the phone number ends in three three four four you are up can you hear us? Hello? Hello there. Hello. Let me uh, try it hey again. Hey there. Go ahead. Oop. They were there for a second. There and we go. Let's like try again now. It, keeps, it, did, it unmutes and then it mutes. But I hear you now, bud. Go ahead. Go right ahead. Fort Worth. Hey there, Dan. How are you from Fort Worth? I'm I'm doing good, thank you. Very good. What um, can we help you with I today? Guess, I guess I'm trying to get started with you guys, and uh, I'm wanting to I'm tried to get hooked up last night, and uh, I think I'm waiting on a call from Mr. Sullivan. Um, 
Okay, well, tell what, me, tell what me what you mean by getting. Around? Well, yeah, tell uh, me, tell getting, me. getting leads, getting signed up for. Uh, I've selected a county here in Texas, and. Uh, okay. Just wondering gotcha what the covered. turnaround is. <clears throat> Well, got you covered. I mean, Jim, as I said, Jim is on vacation, and if you talk sure. to him, you probably heard on his voicemail that he's off the next couple of days. But uh, we can certainly get you squared away and uh, and and dealt with, and Jim will either get back to you on uh, on late in the day tomorrow or uh, certainly the first of next week, but probably tomorrow he'll be in touch with you, and he'll get you squared away. Great. I got a house and uh, trying to get – trying to get closed on, and uh, I'm ready to get started with ProGate. Well, we're certainly ready for you to get started, and uh, we'll look forward to working with you. And as far as turnaround time, it's pretty quick. I mean, once you get signed up, uh, you know, we make sure that we get out there and get your get your leads for you. And once we receive them in from the collector, then we kind of take over from there, and we perform a good bit of processing on the data. We run them through and do some validation of addresses as, as best we can given the resources we have. And we also, as we said earlier, augment them with phone numbers so that we provide you as much as possible a great ability to contact the customers that are, uh, are the, the uh, personal representatives. So we take a little bit of time to do that, but that's typically no more than a day processing. So as soon as your leads come back to us from the researchers, which they do that once a month, we usually turn them around to you within 24 hours, so it's pretty quick turnaround time. Okay. You say once a month. Is that going to is that the first of month? Say the middle of the month? Uh, it's not a particular time. It depends on the market right. and the researcher because a, a researcher may be doing you know in in some cases researchers are doing four and five counties and they kind of do it on okay. a circuit. So they it's whenever they get in and get the data to us, we get leads every single day. We process every day. Okay. It, it well, will. Well, I'm trying to. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It, no, no. I was just. This is Tom. I was just going to say it, it. It normally includes a 30-day period. So if you get it on the 15th of the month, then it will be from the previous probably 16th of the month as far as the collection period. So uh, we we get them to you, as Tim said, as quickly as possible. Right. I didn't know if they had like specific days that they go to each county courthouse, and then that way you can. As the months roll on, you can pretty much figure within a day or two each month you should be receiving leads. You know that, that's that exactly how it works. That's how it works here too. Is that um, okay? If, let's say if your leads do come in around the fifteenth, then you should expect them every month around that same time, give or take a day, depending on weekends sure. and things like that. Okay. Yep. That's what I was kind of looking for. Kind of looking for some consistency. Other than, you know, that some people sit on stuff for a long time, and then one day they decide, I'm doing it. They pull the trigger. Yep. Well, and unfortunately, you know, we're always subject to the the uh, what's going on in that clerk of the court's office in each each jurisdiction. So, oh yeah, it's not always not always. It, it sometimes happens exactly like you said. Certainly in smaller jurisdictions where there's one clerk who processes those and maybe one or two days a month they process probate and two or three other days they process dog licenses. You know, it just depends on what they're doing. But for the, for the most part, we're pretty consistent and, and kind of the the numbers apply month over month, but it, it is, there is some seasonality to it. But over a, you know, a three month period, generally the averages kind of stay the same and, and work out pretty well based on the county. Sounds good. Thank you guys. So for we look, your service. look forward to, you bet. Look forward to working with you and uh, look forward to helping you be successful in your marketplace. Any other questions we can answer, or do you want to kind of wait until you get your stuff in? and? Get... Yep, I will. All right, sir. That sounds like a plan. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. you bet. Thank you. Uh, Tom, you want to give me the okay, next one there, buddy? Uh, yeah, we have one more in the queue. It ends in, uh, number ends in 8883. Let me see if I can get you on. Are you there? Yes, guys. Afternoon. Matthew Ledford in lovely Charleston, South Carolina. How's everybody doing? Everybody's Super. great. Indeed, that is a lovely place. And just before we get started, we just see we got a couple other folks in there, so I won't have to say it, but star six one, let us know and we'll be glad to talk with you. And uh, you go ahead, bud. Tell me how things are in Charleston. 
Thanks. Oh, lovely. It's nice to actually have fall. And y'all are making me envious here. You didn't invite the rest of us to come mountain biking with you, and I'm a little disappointed in that. Uh, I think next time, you know, invites need to go out in advance, and and we all need to be able to come up and ride with y'all. That sounds not unreasonable, but right now I'd be happy to invite you down to Florida, and you can help us bail water. Bailing water is not as much fun. <laughs> that's that's way too much of that fun, functional fitness thing, you know. I mean, you I, that's bet. too much like work right there. But well, I'm glad y'all are doing well with the, uh, the hurricane recovery and everything. My questions relate to building a team and um, both uh, your referral network. And I've already started reaching out to some of my estate people um, and making some great connections with them. Uh, but is there, have you guys found best ways to build your team and referral network? And is anybody using an ISA to help call the leads and set appointments? Sure. So let's kind of take those in order. So from a referral network, let's make sure that we're, we're on the same page. And I want to make sure that I'm referring to what you're talking about. When you mean a referral network, are you talking about the various service providers to whom you'd refer things for clean out crews and all of that sort of stuff is that what you're talking about yeah exactly i want to be able to deliver okay. on the what we promise in the letter to the to the you know 10 10 star customer service and so sure you know finding finding the best people to help with the different parts of the process and being able to deliver on what we promise in the letter is a big part of where where i'm coming from with excellence with my heart okay well that's that's a great way to put that also i, I very much like the way you express that so it's it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's kind of the same thing that you would do. It, you're basically just doing the work for the PR. So put yourself in that position and say, okay, so if I wanted to find the best person to do whatever the service is that you're looking to offer, whether that's clean out, whether it's auction service, estate sale, painting, uh, you know, any kind of contracting, whatever those things are, those are the things that you're looking to find the best person in your market. And it's it, Potentially best is kind of defined in a couple of ways. One is someone who will, in fact, service the information and service the leads that you give them. Assuming you give somebody one, they'll actually show up, talk to the PR, and give them a fair price and then do the job extremely well. So that's a big part of it. The other side of it is how well are they related or are they rated by other people in your market. And, you know, a reasonable place to start with that are things like Yelp and Angie's List and places like that, people who are highly rated by others. And then, you know, it's that personal meeting. You need to sit down with them and basically interview them and interview them in such a way as to say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm building a team to service probate. I'm going to have business to give you. I want you to tell me why you should be the person or people that I use to provide this service, whatever that is. And you take the lead in that and make them make them sell you on their capability of doing it. Um, mm -hmm. it's, an, it's the right way to do that and, uh, you know, get that stuff done by looking at it the way that you would normally look at. And it, it is a good way to go do it. And then, of course, generally, the, the, to be straightforward here, you're recommending the vendor and, and the PR is actually putting the agreement together in place for the service. So you're not doing it for them. You're not actually representing that person and you're saying it correctly. You are referring them. But in order to give that referral, you need to do that. Flip side to that, and I'll just continue this and then let you talk some more, is that you need to make sure that person is also willing to refer people that they find in that circumstance back to you, whether it be anybody that needs that, uh, you know, whatever that need is. If they somebody looking for clean-out services, it's pretty, pretty logical that if that's happening in a house, that house has got to get sold. So you're looking – for those leads back, whether they're in probate or not, somebody's going to move out of that house. So it's a sharing situation, and oftentimes people forget about the other side of it. You're just talking about giving them business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. But I mean, it's it's pretty much not much different than what you would be doing if you had that house and you were you were looking to sell it and you needed to do those things. It needed paint. It needed uh, to have the possessions moved out and you were having a tough time figuring out how to get rid of your loved one's possessions and it would sure be great if somebody came in and took that burden off your shoulders and, you know, that sort of thing. And you just need to find the right people to do that. And the best way to do that is to, you know, start dialing for dollars and have them um, either come to you to your office if you're working out of an office or meet them somewhere and um, even meet them on a job. It'd be good to maybe show up where they're working and say, hey, where are you? Where are you working today? Let me come out and chat with you for a couple of minutes and buy you a cup of coffee. 
That's a great idea. Yeah, that way you can see what kind of team they've got on the scene and what kind of job they're doing. You bet. And you know, having having both large and big con- or large and small contractors is a good idea. If you need handyman work, that's one thing. But if you need somebody who can pull a permit and do that sort of stuff in a market, then you kind of maybe need two people to do that, or maybe more than one. And uh, you know, having more than one is always a good thing to do anyway, because if your business gets big enough, you may uh, you might just swamp somebody depending on your market. So you want to make right. sure that if you got another person and you've already got somebody helping helping one person, that if somebody else needs something tomorrow, um, you know, there's more to be done. Right, right. And I always like to I always like to have three in my pocket. And then a lot of folks will say, well, what do you, even for, you know, lenders, you know, so that they can have a choice. And I'm not necessarily steering them to one specific, but then that they often ask me, well, which one do you recommend? I said, well, usually I put the one I recommend most at the top of the list. And so you can start at the top and then see who's the best fit for you um, in the the process. Um, You know, and so that, that's, that's, that's a great, a great strategy. Good, good practice, good practice on that. Yep. Now you had another. I'm sorry, but I, I got so involved in uh, hearing myself talk that I forgot the second part of your question. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> I'm I'm I'm, bu- I'm building a team, uh, right. and I'm looking at hiring an ISA to make some calls. Uh, gotcha. For other parts of the business, um, and wondered if uh, if anyone in the probate space has been uh, using an ISA to make calls and set appointments, um, and what the best sure. practices are there. You bet. So yes, and definitely people people are doing that. And, you know, it's nothing more than anything else. We give you a bunch of phone numbers and uh, something needs, somebody needs to reach out to those people and talk to them. And so it's a matter of taking the time to appropriately train your ISA to ask the questions that you want to ask. And depending on the experience level of your ISA, what, in fact, the result of that call is going to be. Are you simply trying to have them pre-qualify? In other words, find out if, indeed, there is property to be sold and if there's an interest in selling it or are you asking them to set an appointment or you know it depends on how far you want them to go and that's depending on the experience level of that ISA and your ability to train them so yes people are using them yes it makes good sense to do it especially in a large market to do that if your market is small and you don't have a lot of leads then you're probably better off doing it yourself primarily because of the the fact that this is kind of a specialized situation and less of a numbers game if you don't have a, a large enough uh, market sample but um in a in a market of you know uh, multiple tens of people you may not have time to talk to if you got potentially four phone numbers uh you know you you may not have the chance to get to them all and using an ISA certainly cuts down your time yeah just looking for ways to kind of leverage time in in that i mean i probably i i'm Pretty stoked! I got my first Charleston County leads today, so good timing on that. Appreciate it, guys. And um, been kind of working the Dorchester lead. Got letters going out. So already those guys and got it on autopilot. That way I don't have to keep checking in on it. And um, and so appreciate what you guys are doing. It's nice, nice uh, services. That, that's great. We uh, we we really appreciate you know being able to do it. And we've grown we've grown our services based on the needs of our people. We set things up to. Uh, you know, as we've automated things, it's because we, it's kind of back to your question, we have tried to find the people to do the services that we wanted to do and couldn't find people that really worked exactly the way we wanted to provide them for you guys. So that's why we sort of invented them ourselves. Great way to do it. Appreciate it, guys. All right. Anything else we can talk about or has that got you pretty well squared away? Well, I, just one last thing on the mountain biking. I grew up in Asheville, North Carolina. I'm a realtor in North and South Carolina. And so anybody in the call that wants to make referrals, love to have referrals for either the Charleston market or the Asheville market. If you decide you don't want to do West Virginia, you want to do Asheville, we can, we can help connect with some good trails and some good places to stay there as well. <laughs> You're just trying to look for an excuse to go back home. <laughs> hey, man, I, you know, especially in July and August, I'm ready to get back to the mountains. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's a beautiful Thanks. time up there. All right, bud. Thank you very much for calling. Thanks, we appreciate guys. you a lot. Appreciate you so much. Yeah, I'm going to listen in and see what else I can learn. Appreciate you guys doing this. All righty. Okay, we have one more, or actually two more in the queue. We've got ending in 2677. Seven. You're up. Hello? Hi, guys. This is Helen in Quincy, Mass. Hey there. 
So I'm hoping to hear from some people that have had success with the program. Um, I'm in the process of trying to make the decision on whether I should take the leap, and I was hoping there was somebody on the call that could share some of their um, successes or positive experiences. <laughs> well, we usually we usually do get some of those folks on there, and oftentimes we uh, we hear from them, but certainly we don't have any control over who does and doesn't come online. But I would urge you to uh, to go listen to some of the calls that. We record every one of these calls. We record them every every uh, week that we do them. And there are lots and lots of people who will uh, come on and tell you how well this is working for them and all of that, and none of it's scripted. So if you go back and listen to the last two or three weeks, we've had some great folks come on and tell us of their success and how, how they got there and what they did. So uh, as, you, as you continue to listen, I am sure that you will hear people doing that. The other thing you might want to do is Take a look in our Facebook group, uh, the Facebook Mastermind group. Are you a member of that? No, not yet. Okay, go to uh, just go to Facebook and go to uh, All the Leads Mastermind and uh, ask ask to join, and uh, we'll certainly uh, put you in there and let you take a look. And uh, we don't turn people down if they're in our business, and happy to let you join that. And there's lots of lots of folks in there that that can share their experiences with you as well, and We'll gladly do so. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. We look forward to hearing about you being successful and uh, knock them dead. We look forward to it. Thank you. All righty. Tom? Okay. We have another caller ending in 7741. You are up. Hi. How are you guys doing today? We're just doing great. We're doing great. Who am I talking with? I'm Damon Wilson. I'm in the Chicago area, um, new to um, all the leads. I just got my leads um, actually last week, and I actually just received a um, um, the postcard that was sent out. So I'm pretty sure that everyone got their card. So now, so now today is the day I'm actually going to start making phone calls. But that's not the Great. reason why. That's not the well. I guess it is kind of the reason why I was calling. I missed out on the um, the roll call, the role play uh, call yesterday. When will that? be posted up for the um, archives for October? Uh, I'm sure that it it, it it may already have I, been if it's not, and Chad is not the way. So. No, it's not there. I, I'm, on it. I'm looking at it right now. Tim, okay. that, remember, uh, Chad uh, and Jim postponed that, and they will let you know. They, they were gone yesterday was the problem, and uh, I think they put an announcement out there that they will reschedule that. So oh, I'm okay. sure that Probably next week you will get a uh, an email with the rescheduled date, but it did not happen yesterday. Oh, okay. okay. Not bad. Out. So yeah, you didn't you didn't miss anything. And go back and if you're interested in some of the role play, go back and uh, and uh, listen to some of the previous ones. I bet you there's it's it's unlikely that there's uh, something new that you're going to encounter that we haven't talked about on that role play call, and we certainly uh, are. Are happy to you know share that information with you. That's why it's there, and uh, go back and listen to some of the previous ones. Yeah, right, one last one, I, one last question before you go. What what is yeah. like the best role play card I can archive for like the first initial conversation with um, you know the um, the the personal representative? Yeah, I wish I, I wish I could Damon, answer that. Go ahead, Tom. No, no. I what I was going to say, Damon, is uh, there's probably about 25 role play calls in the archive area of your account so when you go out there uh, normally Chad puts uh, a, a little summary of what's discussed in them so I think you'll be able to you know if you're looking for a specific intro or something you should be able to find them H have you listened to a few of those already I listened to the one for September okay I would go back I always recommend listening to at least three or four of them and um, you're going to see a, a pattern of how, you know, the people make their initial call, how they position themselves as a full-service company. And, um, you know, as Chad always mentions in his training, I mean, the, the conversation can go multiple ways, but the most important thing is for you to position yourself as being unique and understanding what the family and the personal representative is going through. And, and make them feel comfortable that, you know, you're just not out trying to get a, a quick deal. 
that you actually understand what they're going through, as it says in our sample letters and things like that. So um, I think by listening to three or four of those, you'll, you'll get your own you know, script put together pretty easy. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, that's great. And and literally, I mean that those if you're if you have any of you who are on here, if you have any degree of call reluctance or you're worried about you know what somebody's going to say to you or how to respond to you know some negative things folks might say to you, urge you to listen to those calls. There's lots of lots of lots of good information in there, and you know we kind of get you through the rough spots and happy to do so. And also, if you you know you do start making your calls today. Make some notes as you go. When you run into circumstances or things that you hear that you're not really sure how to deal with them, make some notes about those things, and then you bring those to the role play call uh, the next time the role play call happens, and uh, you know try chat on with them and uh, let him help you with them. He's happy to do that, and that's part of the game. But I will I would say this to anybody who's on here: as you prosecute this business, as you're out there working these, you need to be sure that you're you're approaching this like a business and treat it like a business. Make sure that you are accurately uh, putting information down so that you're growing your own knowledge base. When someone says this, this is what you do. And each market has some you know, unique things about it. You may learn that uh, different things happen at different times based on what's going on in the court system in your particular marketplace. And as you meet with attorneys in your marketplace, you may find that uh, there are things that happen when you do that that you learn that are, again, unique to your market. Build that knowledge base for yourself. And I think the earlier person asked about the ISA. I mean, part of that is also information that will help you train your ISAs as you go through the process to make sure they're doing exactly what you want to go do as well. So write it all down. I have one last okay. question as part, as part of that question as well. Sure. I, um, I tried, to, as far as the archive, I tried, I can archive the um, conference calls on my computer but when I try to um, archive them, like on my phone, it won't allow for me to archive the um, the old calls on my. You mean phone. down? You mean download them and save them? Is that what you're talking about? Well, when I try, like for example, where it says listen now, like when I try to pull up the um, the archives on my computer, I can click listen now, and I can actually listen to it. But if I try to go into um, all my, all my leads on my cell phone. It won't allow for me to listen to it. What kind of uh, what kind of cell phone do you have? I have an LG Stylo. It's um, T-Mobile. Sure. Okay. Let me we'll we'll take that offline. Take a little look at it. We've had I mean lots of people are are able to do that, and we've had a couple of other people who have said they've had a challenge recently with that. We'll take a quick look at that and see what we can provide because we want to try to make it as easy as possible. And more and more people are you know listening to wanting to listen to this kind of kind of information as opposed to listening to, uh, you know, music or something else in their car, and we want to make it easy. So thanks for bringing that up, and we'll take a look at it. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, right now, Tom, I don't think we have anybody else in the queue, and I'm going to kind of go around the horn one more time. We are we always, uh, you know, we never, ever get done more than a half hour, and sometimes we run as long as an hour. But if you have additional questions, Press star six and one, and we'll be happy to take your questions. Otherwise, we're going to kind of cut this short, and we don't want to shortchange you. Uh, again, no questions off limits. And if you've got some good information you'd like to share, uh, it would be great to hear that. Anybody uh, want to press star six and one? We'll be here waiting for you. Tom, I think you just got another one there. Can you see if we got somebody? I think we did. Yes, we did. I have a number ending in oh, 3582. You're up. Yes, this is Marcia from Rochester, Minnesota. Hey there. How are you? I am well, thank you. Hey, I just have a question. Um, is this, I guess, when if we subscribe, is do we have exclusive? Like, is there ex exclusivity to the counties that we subscribe for, like no other realtors can also buy probate leads, or how does that part of it work? No, we don't We don't sell things on an exclusive basis. We kind of try to look at the marketplace itself and make sure there's reasonable coverage, but surely giving everyone a good chance to be successful. In most cases and in most counties, we never exceed three realtors in a given marketplace. A lot of them 
you know, we have, there are a lot of, quite frankly, a lot of them that we only have one. And in some of the very large markets, we may have more than three, but seldom is that the case. So, I mean, you're never dealing with, in a situation where you have typically more than two, and in your marketplace, I'm certain that's the case. Okay. Is there is there any way before we subscribe to know if there's other agents that are subscribed to your service? Is that something we yeah, can find actually, out? Actually, no, there isn't. We don't we don't typically do that because we don't we don't we we don't disclose our business model. And uh, I kind of gave you the only answer I can give you there. Okay. We don't okay. we don't dig in and do that. But you know, like I said, a lot of this more function functionally is that we limit that to 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 the people that I said and. We will never put you in a situation where it's an overly competed marketplace because we want to retain our customers. We want to help you grow your business. And in in marketplaces where we have, we know that we have more than one folk, person in the market. We're also very careful when we do the mailing for you to make sure that your mailing, everybody's mailings are unique and have have different wording, so they're not being bombarded by the exact same thing and. You're just cookie cuttering somebody else. That negates the value of it. So we're real careful, real careful to make sure we do it right. Okay. And then because I I was kind of signed up for you know some more information. I was actually away at a conference and just got back. I haven't poked around at the website or much. Can you explain a little bit of the process and what's provided? Um, well, from a process standpoint, we furnish you the leads. Uh, we let you know that they're there. We, we go out and collect the leads at the courthouse. We uh, bring the leads back into our data processing center. Uh, we then take those and, and do some validation checks on the data that are there to make sure they're correct and meet our standards. If they don't, we send the researcher back to do a better job, and uh, they don't get to do that maybe more than once before we replace the researcher. Um, at the point that we get the data back in, then we augment that with uh, a proper set of phone numbers so you can reach them. Uh, we then let you know that the data is available to you in your subscriber portal. At that point, you can use the built-in uh, CRM system that we provide as part of our service to work those leads, to uh, set them up for an automated mailing using Mailbox Motivator, to contact them. You can uh, work the leads, put notes in them. You can set reminders up to call them back. Uh, okay. And our recommended approach is that you uh, contact them with a minimum of three letters, and uh, every time you mail a letter out, you call them. Okay. And the other thing that always happens is that Tom, who's my partner who's also on the call, Tom, as soon as you get signed up, Tom's uh, main main focus is to make sure that he calls you and he will literally walk you through every step of the process so that there aren't any other questions that you have and, and describe how it works, what you're supposed to do, how to engage in that, and describe for you all the services that we provide. In addition to just the uh, mailing process with Mailbox Motivator, we also can provide for you a, a custom credibility website that allows you to drive traffic to it and really highlights the fact that you are the probate go-to probate expert in your marketplace and uh, all of those sorts of things. So uh, we keep track of all that for you. Do you have data from clients on what their conversion rates are? Like, say, if you give me 20 probate leads for my county, what the typical conversion rate of getting a listing? Or at least Chad does it. Yeah, Chad does a better job of that than than I will do here. But I can tell you that we also provide a a, a rate of return calculator that you can use as part of our back end system that describes the the rate of return. But in almost every case the rate of return is a pretty staggering rate of return for the investments that gets made in a given marketplace. I don't have the stats at my fingertips and can't answer that for you. I will also tell you it's not a particular, uh, you know, each market is different and larger markets have lower conversion rates than smaller markets because of contact. I think in a smaller market, the conversion rate tends to be potentially higher because you're able to give people a bit more personal attention and focus on the ones that work well. So, I mean, it's just, it just depends. Also, there's another factor in that is that in some markets, uh, their properties only go to probate if indeed there's real estate in them and, and it's proven to be available uh, because of value of the real estate. And in some markets, anything has to go to probate. So it's kind of all over the board, but we do a real good job of giving you the best data. And a lot of that's also up to the effort that you put in. 
sure. So are are you saying some leads or do you scrub leads for you make sure that there's no we do real not. Oh, no, we do okay. not scrub. We don't scrub the leads. We provide you with the information that is furnished by the court, which is who's the personal representative, who's who is the decedent, and if there's an attorney, and the attorney is listed in the case record, we provide that information for you. We are okay. actually looking at we're actually looking at a service that purports to be able to give us good information about available real estate. And the problem that we're having with that, we, we, we're doing some beta testing on it right now. Uh, the challenge that we're finding is that it's somewhat inconsistent because it, it always depends on the MLS system in the marketplace and tax records and all of that. So there are a lot of moving parts and a lot of variables there. And so we, we can only do the best job that we can. And I guess the thing I would say is that it's definitely a numbers game. It is a sure. numbers game sure. in that if you get the letters out and you make the phone calls, you'll find out if there is real estate there, and you know that when things go to probate, a certain number of them are absolutely always going to have real estate involved in it that will need to be sold. So it's a press the flesh and numbers game. Sure. Okay. All right. And I, that's kind of the best answer I can give you. I mean, I, if there were if there were better answers, we'd certainly give them to you, but. I really can't answer that any better than that. It's just kind of a numbers game. Okay. All right. Thank you. No, no problem. That's really very good questions. I appreciate the questions and, and yeah. uh, look forward to hearing your success. All right. Thank you. Okay, folks. So it's star six and one. If you press star six and one, uh, you can certainly get on and we'll be happy to take your questions. We I'm have one kind more of give you right now. All right. We have, Fire away. Uh, Ending in 1702, you are up. Hello. Hi. Hello there. Hi, this is Leif Erickson. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Fine, thanks. Um, a couple weeks ago on the call, Chad was talking about adding Probate Plus um, to all the leads, which would just simply focus on the people that had the real estate. Right. Is there any forward movement on that, or when do you think that's? Yeah, that was what be? I was just. Did you just? That was what I was literally just talking about. Was that oh, I'm sorry. Thing. I'm looking. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. The the answer is yes. We are we are exploring it. We have people in beta that are that are working with the data, and we're finding some mixed results. And we're part of what we're doing is we're making sure that we're shoring up the uh, information process because that's data that we actually get from data services and all that sort of stuff. So we make sure that we, we we're going to make sure that we can provide accurate and valuable information before we release that so that it's, we can't productize it if we can't support it. So that's okay, kind of where we're at. We're definitely keep you posted and uh, it's kind of the same answer that we're dealing with as far as obituaries. Uh, you know, in the obituary area, we've got a similar kind of looking at it from a beta standpoint. And in that case, we've not even... Uh, We've not even released it to the public yet because we weren't comfortable that we could replicate the results that we got to begin with. So, um, you know, we're 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 going to make sure that we get it out there, and we're not going to rest until we can get it done. But we're not quite ready to say, "Yep, we got all that in hand." Gotcha. Okay. Looking forward to that. All right. Anything else we can help you with? Nope. All righty. No, Folks, I'm going to take one more pass around, star six and one. If you got a question and you'd like to ask it, please feel free to do that. We'd love to hear from you. Again, star six and one. And, uh, Tom, if we have anybody else in the queue, let's get to them. No, we have no takers at the moment. All right. Well, folks, I'm going to continue talking for just a second. Again, it's star six one. If you'd like to uh, talk with us, be happy to take your calls. If not... We are going to call it a day here. Um, Jim usually ends these calls by saying, uh, find something that you took off of this call, something that, you know, resonated with you. And he says it much better than I do. And Chad mim mimics him pretty well. But I think the thing that he always leaves it with is encouraging you to take action and get it done. Don't sit on these leads. They don't get better. They won't do you any good if they're lying under your pillow and, uh, you know, you hope that you'll wake up in the morning and make money. you got to get out there and get it done. So, Send those letters out. We're here to help you get that done and uh, follow up with phone calls and uh, go be successful and come back on next week and let us know that you've been successful or ask us more questions.
If there's nobody else, I think we're going to call it a day, Tom. I think that's good, and thank you very much for participating. All right, folks. Have a great day. Bye now.